and to tap Chaya. Obviously, like, one of the most exciting players that we've got in the game today. Uh, fastest player on tour, generally. So, yeah, it'll be an interesting game, this, and... Such a short format, you can't really pick a winner in any game, but especially for these two great players as well. Sean Marco's been putting in a lot of practice. Yes, he was on the practice tables yesterday getting ready for this as Deb Chire shows off those scary new shoes. Different, aren't they? Hedgehog vibes. Well, not as sharp as that, though, Phil. You know, a couple of years ago, Martin Gould started the World Championship 60th in the world rankings with the possibility of dropping off. That seemed unthinkable. And at times last season, the relegation threat hung over the head of Eight. Ted Chara New. Again, unthinkable. Yeah, and it, it just shows the, the game today. I was just saying before with Dave how the strength and depth is just mind-blowing now. Um, Consistency is one thing, obviously, but the capabilities of a lot of the players on tour now is just so good that you've got players like Tepi, you know, falling into that possibility where he, he could have been off the tour. Um, obviously, other, other good players from over the years, like Sir Michael Holt, have dropped off, you know, and it's just so tough now. You've, you've, you've got to be consistently playing well otherwise you can be in danger but no. you, as you'll see today by the looks of things just how good a player Tep Chaya is it's kind of unthinkable that he might not have even been on the tour this season started off sharp here though the great long red looks to have got the pace of the 12. table quite quickly coming down there off the green for the red Just as I put the curse on him, he's left himself a bit awkward on the black to get into the reds. He's going to have to really power this one in. And it's not too bad. If that one doesn't go past the red and pink to the 20. yellow pocket, which he's looking at now, he's still got the one on the right-hand side. Twenty. Wasn't easy though. Tricky little shot, sort of cutting them back into a half a blind pocket there. Well, that wasn't just a miss. That was a wholesale miss. Calculation, misjudgment. Yeah, one of them shots where you're sort of putting a little bit of left hand side left hand side on to help it round and Marco's obviously as we've said not too used to playing in tournaments lately. And getting used to these very slippery conditions on a brand new cloth. Straight away there that could have just been one where the white's pushed over a little bit more than he was expecting and it can make you look silly sometimes. But either way, it's let Tep Chaya straight back in, and he's got a nice chance now. Eight. He'd be disappointed if he doesn't get very close to winning the frame from here. Nine. Purposely leave himself nice and low on the black. If he wants to be a bit more aggressive and not just play for the single reds, he'll be straight into the pack with that red on the, on the right there to go at as insurance. 60. You wouldn't see the likes of Tepi play for single reds and just dilly dally around them. If there's that, if that sort of shots on, he'll always get into them, open the frame up, and try and win the frame straight away in one visit. 17. He doesn't hang about neither. Sees the game very quickly. Sees the shot very quickly. Twenty-four. 
25. Absolutely tailor-made. Tepchara knew to win the shootout, which he did in 2019. If you're unfamiliar with that tournament, it's all 10-minute matches. First five minutes, 15 seconds. Second five 33. minutes, 10 seconds. Now, for most players, especially the 10 seconds, that's a real hindrance, a real handicap for him. Hardly so. 40. Yeah, just like another day's practice for Tepi. Um, it can it can only be a bit of a hindrance sometimes when you're a bit awkward. 40. But if your positional play is good, like it is at the moment in this break, I mean, you, you know the shot straight away. You can just get down and play it. it it's as you say, it's it's totally suited to his game. A tournament we all look forward to now, but obviously players like Tep Chaya are going to look look forward to it that little bit more, thinking they've 40. got a great chance of winning it every year. Forty-nine. And look at this. Frame already in the books. This is what he does. 56. Fifty-seven. Lovely little cannon there. Frame one, obviously, so he just took the opportunity to slide off the reds, open them up and get on the black at the same time. table will really suit him it's very conducive to floating the ball around and I personally believe he could prosper here yeah he's got a lovely smooth cue action Tep Jaya being as quick as he is as well he sort of looks so good on the shot he doesn't look that quick if you know what I mean he's, he's not like a Tony Drago where he was Tony you could almost imagine him running around the table and, and getting down and kind of wouldn't say a jabby player but more on instinct um, not so much of a technique there, whereas Tep Chaya, he's got a lovely flow and cue action as well. And although he's quick, 70. he's a bit like Ronnie in that regard, where he doesn't look as quick as he is. 71. Now Rob Spencer, the referee. Has the traditional 77. black leather shoes on today. When you're refereeing for a new, a pair of trainers might be advisable. Yeah, and it's already warm enough in there. He's going to be quite warm after this. 84. Thank you. 85. Marco Fu missed that middle distance red. Grossly thick. And new is now three balls 90. away from a century. Yeah, and that's, that's it in this format, such a short format. As we say, it's four frames and you kind of know that in your head if you make one mistake. The match isn't obviously over or anything, but you're putting yourself under pressure 96. straight away. 100. He's actually so good, he's infuriating Teb Chira Nu because when you see him play like this... 105. A little bit like Jack Lazowski, you think, surely he's going to win big tournaments. Yeah, it seems it seems as when he can get into this relaxed zone. One hundred and eleven. He's at his best, and obviously when the pressure comes on a bit, and like everybody, and you're playing in big occasions, it's not as easy. But yeah, how easy was that? One hundred and eighteen. It was preposterously round. easy. A one hundred and eighteen clearance from Tepchaya Anu, who announces his arrival onto the scene in the Bed Victor Championship League with brilliance.
It was as though he had never been away. What a way to start a tournament. What a way to start a season for Teb Chaya Anu. A break of 118 right. to very frame. rapidly take the first frame. Marco Fu to break. Against Marco Fu. So Fu knows exactly what he's up against. A player who is clearly sharp. And that shows to me, Gary, that he must have practised quite a bit between the end of the World Championship and the start of the new campaign. Is that the case with you? Um, yeah, he, he must have done, obviously, looking sharp there. And same for me, really. Not, not loads, but the last couple of weeks, um, just been getting back into it again. Um, as I said before, there'll be a few players sort of practising a few weeks beforehand. Some will not be doing it hardly at all even yet. But, yeah, myself, I've been up there in uh, Paul Rinaldi's club, North East Nuka Centre. Um, where I practice all the time. So just while I'm on that, a massive thanks to them because always been there for us and, new one. and helped us out with me practice over the last few years. So, yeah, um, great big thanks to North East Snooker Centre and Paul and Alison. And uh, while I'm on it, I might as well say that I've got just got a new sponsor for the season. So I just want to say a massive thanks to um, BM Steel. Mel and Mark there have uh, done a great job to, to get the sponsorship for us. And, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this season. So thanks a lot. Who isn't saying thanks for being put in that predicament? But I think he's OK. Now on table two, what a turn round this is. Stephen Maguire was off to a flyer. He led 2-0. Made breaks of 87 and 63. He was nicely on the way to 3-0. But now it's 2-1 Maguire. And it looks like going 2-2. Dijon Wee, 41 ahead, 35 on. Maguire needs a couple of snookers. You've experienced that yesterday, Gary, in your second match against Barry Pinches, 2-0 up, and eventually only drew two each. Yes, you've got a point, but it must be quite deflating. Yeah, I was I was actually quite frustrated at that one. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a great game between me and Barry, to be honest. As you say, I went 2-0 up. I'm going to blame the food, to be honest. <laughs> the food that they've put on here, as usual, is absolutely exceptional, and I've had a, a, a lovely bit of salmon and potatoes and everything yesterday. And I came onto my game against Barry and I felt so lethargic. I, I think I'd ate too much, Phil. Um, <laughs> and sort of, yeah, went 2-0 up, didn't, didn't feel great though. And Barry's done well to claw his way back and, and got a draw out of it. But it, it set me up in a position where I said before, I knew I had to win the last game. And really, you don't want to be kind of putting yourself in that position if you don't have to. It would have been ideal to get them two wins straight away. And I would have only needed a draw at, uh, at worst, sorry. So, yeah, a, a good start in this is, is, is key. And as I said before, if you get sort of 2-0 ahead, you really don't want to be losing a frame. Frame difference can come into it as well, so... It's, um... It's every what? frame, every ball sort of matters, and it can make it quite a tough format at times. And although he was in with an easy opener there, this is not a, a simple chance for Fu, because the two highest value colours are both out of the reckoning. Yeah, it'll be tough to score many from here. Um, he's not got too much of an angle on the green. So it'll be a good positional shot to get onto one of these reds. Yeah, just a little bit too much to ask there, I think. Four. So a tough start for Marco. Marco Fu. Okay, Four. a little sloppy on the safety.
we can't overstate the level of Marco Fu's celebrity in Hong Kong. Much loved out there, and quite rightly so. In 2017, Gary, he was appointed a justice of the peace. Yeah, he's a, he's a great ambassador as well, is Marco. Not only a great player, a very strong ambassador for snooker in Hong Kong. And whether you agree with it or not, obviously got his chance to play in the World Championships <laughs> when he came back and um, does a lot for the game. So it's, it's just really nice to see Mark go back playing again back here. And hopefully that's, that's going to be him playing in most of the tournaments again. Yeah, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, he had his problems to undergo eye surgery, which clearly was a, a big blocker to the progress, progress of his career. Yeah, I actually remember playing Marco in, I think it was the European Masters a few years ago, around the time of having the surgery, and I think I'd beaten him in the quarterfinals, and... He'd, he'd really picked up the pace. I mean, he's not a slow player anyway, Marco, what? but he'd really picked up the pace against me. I mean, he was almost a tep chai kind of speed, believe it or not. And I did ask him after the game, like, just curious as to why you were playing so quick. And he'd said at the time that he, he couldn't really see. So he was just playing a lot more on instinct if he could. Um, but, yeah, hopefully all them troubles are behind him. Because it would be great to see a player of Marco's class back playing Six. the way we know he can. Nice little chance of a cannon at the reds. He's got the red on the left and the red to the right of the black. Chose there not to be as, an, as aggressive. Didn't have to play them hard, but he could have still went into them there and been on one of the two reds. He's going to leave that now for a few shots. 50. Danger being, obviously, if you keep taking away the single reds, you're leaving yourself less opportunity when you do go into the reds to land on one. But he has got the red to the, the right of the pink. And another couple of open reds. 22. If he's got the angle here, he can flick one or two out. 23. Deciding on the black here, he'll be looking to play the red to the left of the black. And then surely leave the angle on the black to go into the reds. 30. 31. Everyone break builds different ways, and I know a lot of people go on about certain players who go into the Reds at every given opportunity, and some pick them off. It's not always as clear cut as that. Sometimes you'll even find players who you think play very aggressively, 30. like Tep Chaya does, do what he did there, and sometimes pick one or two off first and then go into them. It just all depends on the situation, really. And that just comes with experience and practice. Oh, it's not worked it's out from there. 38. Was a little more tricky than it might have appeared. And this shot's very similar to what Marco messed up before. And he's kind of done the same again. He's caught it thick, so I think he's maybe just not quite used to the slippiness of the cloth and it pushing slightly when he's putting a bit of left hand side on the cue ball and these are things when you've not been playing as I say in tournaments very often that take a little bit of getting back used to again I'll tell you what Teb Chaya and New didn't get used to when he recently made his international nine ball pool debut partnering Nopon Sankarm 
Thailand came into the World Cup down at Brentwood in Essex as late replacements for the Philippines. Sadly, Efren Reyes could not get a, a visa and wasn't able to attend. And we all thought, given the quality of Not on Sankam and Tepchar and New on a snooker table, they might do something in the World Cup. Not so. They lost in the first round to Jason Theron and Kyle Akalu from South Africa. And quite frankly, they looked like a couple of fishes out of water. Yeah, I actually watched a little bit of that on the highlights. And to be honest, it made me feel a lot better about my campaign in the UK Open. Um, they did. They, they played quite poorly. And people who don't realise the difference, obviously, the, the, the conditions are so different. The cloths are so slippy. If you think snooker table match cloths are slippy and reactive, I mean, it's another level in the pool in the nine ball and uh, getting used to the cue and the balls, the size difference and weight difference of the balls and things. It's all things you've got to get used to if you're going to play at any kind of high level. What? So although it made them look a bit stupid, <laughs> I can totally understand why they've struggled. Um, but as I say, I'm, I'm sure if any of us had like a good go at it and had a, a few weeks to a month's practice and played with, you know, the, the right cues and, and all that kind of stuff, then... Um, it is a game where I think any snooker player doing that Seven. could actually have a good run and, and, and put Eight. up a good performance. So it would be nice if we can get the snooker players involved in the nine ball pool again. Yeah, because Emily Fraser and the team at Matrim Multisport are doing such a wonderful job in promoting nine ball and taking it to new heights. And so having some of the snooker guys Oops. there and making their presence felt would be, would be terrific. <laughs> of course, we had Judd Trump at the the US Open last year in Atlantic City. 40. And it was amazing the reaction of the spectators and his fellow players when Judd turned up. It was it was wonderful to see. Yeah, it, it, it just gets the hype around Q Sports in general, doesn't it? So that's what that's what snooker needs, pool needs, all of it, you know. It's nice. um if we can work together in some ways and, and get that then twenty. It's absolutely brilliant for Pool and snooker. Mark goes in a decent position here where he's got another couple of loose reds. But he's going to need to move them two reds behind the black to have a chance of winning the frame. So he'll be looking just to pop this pink red next to the black and leave an 27. angle on the black to cannon them two reds. And this is where some, some people ask, you know, how many shots ahead are you thinking? In that situation there, yeah, you're thinking three or four shots ahead, but only because you know you've got them two reds to move. Generally, on a, in a normal break, you, you're only really thinking about the shot you're playing to get on the next ball, to leave an angle on the one after that, and that's as far ahead as you really think, because the game's too hard to try and think any further than that. You don't end up where you want to be most of the time, believe it or not. And it's always plan B coming into effect. That's a lovely little cannon he's played there. And the pockets have been playing a little bit more generous than what I think most of the players are used to on the star tables. It was mentioned, I think, yesterday. 46. And these these reds along the, the black cushion there, they're, they're not as difficult as they may be normally, for whatever reason that is. But the Rasson, the Rasson tables don't seem to play as tight as the stars. Well, we had Sean Murphy in your role on the first couple of days of the tournament. And he said that almost immediately. 49. You're quite right, I think, across this, this top cushion, especially if you play a red or a black. Sedately, they'll go in. I do think, though, the, the middle pockets are, are quite brutal at times. Would you agree? Um, possibly. They, they don't look it. I mean, I didn't actually have many shots to, to sort of test that theory out. 50. But, like, there, that sort of went in with ease. And he's obviously hit it well. It, it hasn't exactly wobbled or anything, but... Yeah, the corners especially, I def definitely found them a little bit more generous. I actually played a rest shot down the side cushion yesterday in my last game. One that I would probably think twice about on a star table, but th thought if I got anywhere near, it would go in. And he's got a lovely cannon there. Well, that is the, the shot of the morning so far for me.
59. 24 in front. The break goes to 59, so the green is frame ball. This to equalise. Yeah, I'll just be putting full concentration into the green. Won't even be thinking about trying to get position on the brown, really. Just concentrate on the green. As you say, that'll be frame over. Not an easy shot, but one if he concentrates on and hits it well, you'd expect Marco to get. 62. He's still got it, Marco Fu. 44 years of age now. In a bygone era, that might have signified he was over the hill. But he, he's actually two years younger than the world champion and world number one, so he can't say that anymore. Yeah, how, how the perception of the game's changed. 71. Well, the application of bundles of sides. Fu misses the pink, but... The break of 71, the clearance to blue was exceptional, especially the way he got the yellow into play. Marco Fu draws level at one frame each. In this battle of Hong Kong against frame. Thailand, Sorry, the maximum number of frames will be contested. And that should come as no surprise when you look at the previous head-to-heads between Teb Chai Anu and Marco Fu. They've played four times before, all best of sevens. 1-4-2 and 3-4-3s. Yeah, and could be could be another close one here. Can't see any reason why it might not be two each today. Both players look to be playing well. Marco struggled a little bit early on, but seems to have got a good feel for the conditions and how things are playing now. So hopefully we'll see um, some good snooker. That's worked out well for Unnu. Very well. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look to be much on here other than to come off the side cushion and just rest onto that red on the black cushion there. Just to contain safety. Played it quite well. Again, got the pace lovely there. Always trying to put the cue ball as close as you can to that cushion just to make the shot harder for your opponent. Makes so much difference if it comes off even six inches and your opponent can start putting the stone or side on to swing the ball round. Once he can only hit the top of the cue ball, limits his shots massively. Just trying to come really thin off this red now. Foul and a miss. Except Chiron knew four. Back. Yeah. 
while Rob Spencer puts the cue ball back after calling a foul and a miss. I can tell you, as we suspected, Stephen Maguire and Si Jawi ended up drawing 2-2. And in fact, the second match of the day over on table two has just begun. It's Mitchell Mann yeah, it's against Matthew yeah, Stevens. And Marco, in this situation, obviously with the three misses and you've lost the frame rule, he'll already have eyed up a second shot. I think if he misses it this time, he needs a backup plan. But he's, cut, he's caught it just right, he's played that really well. Have you ever lost a frame as a result of three consecutive misses, Gary, or indeed been a, a beneficiary of someone who's done it? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think I have, as a professional at least, no. I'm not too sure, but I'm not. I, I, I can't remember, to be honest, whether I've received a frame in that manner either. I've been very close a few times. <laughs> Bit of good attack and safety there, and there's a red came over the right corner, but obviously there's a red block in that one, so a little bit of trouble here for Marco. He'd be struggling to find a, a decent safety from there. Try and chip this red that's near the black spot towards the cushion and put the white up to somewhere near where it is now, hopefully. It's a very good shot again. Again, blocking that red over the right-hand corner. Excellent shot. Yeah, an extended tap on the table with his cue from Ted Choi Anu, recognising a, a classy effort. Because he's moved that red, he's actually left this as a shot to nothing now for the path of the cue ball. Great shot. What? Yeah, harsh on Fu, considering what he did before. Absolutely. Yeah, if Marco could only just get himself out of the situation he was in there, he played a very good shot. And Tep Chai has potted a great red, you've just got to hold your hands up and say a good shot. Just floats the brown in like it's over the pocket. It looks very comfortable today, Tep Chaya. Five. Six. Didn't catch that one the way he would have wanted to, though he's maybe caught it a touch thin or not got enough screw into the cue ball. He wanted to screw past the pack of reds there. He can't see the black. He may be having to try and come off the side cushion and hit the black on the top side as we look so that he can send the cue ball back into ball. Thank you. Not an easy shot to judge. Played that quite well, though. He's caught the so right side of it. Six. Quite a good shot there. Yeah, again, it can't speak for Marco, obviously, but it looked like he was just struggling with imparting a bit of side on the cue ball there as to how much it was going to throw, and he's maybe overcompensated slightly. Been a little bit fortunate, though, to... I was going to say it to get away with it, but... There's a plant on here. Slightly awkward queuing, but if he gets anywhere near with the first red, this should go in. And the cannon on the pink's lovely to land what? on the black, so another decent chance. Touch awkward with the two reds to the left of the black. Would have liked the Eight. angle on one of these reds to go the other side to pop the black into this left corner, but he's going to need to wait to get a better chance to try and get on that black and manoeuvre them reds so he can get them out of the way. Didn't want the cannon on the brown, though. It's He'll be disappointed with that shot. 40. Still got a chance at this red, and as I said, if he can if he can get on the black to the left corner, that's what he's after. So hopefully just play a little cannon on the red to the left of it and open up the black. Four. 
50. Lovely shot again. Just a little further than he would have liked for that shot, but a very good pot and still in position. Might actually even be a makeable plant. In fact, it actually goes past the black to the right corner, so that's a bonus. You can just stun onto the red next to it now, and that's the black opened and a 26. good chance. 23. Played a shot there off the, the previous black. Let you guys on the Pro Tour make look easy, and everyone else knows, isn't that? float around with running side Thanks. and when you're using side Gary I made this point actually when we were watching you yesterday you seem extremely confident it is Thanks. a real art form yeah and again touching what I was saying before even about the pool as well that the, 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 the grippiness and the slickness of the cloths it helps when you know what they're doing and you're playing well but at the same time it's getting used to 38. that Marco's probably struggled with that a little bit in this game so far but once you know what's going on and you've got a feel for the conditions properly, yeah, most pros, pro players would be really comfortable playing with side. It can make you look silly just when you don't really know what's happening. 46. 47. When you think his career was, and I'm not exaggerating, 56. hanging in the balance before the World Championship, but then he won three qualifying matches to make it to the Crucible. 55. Losing 10-7 in the end in the first round of the World Championship to John Higgins. You see him play like this and you think, how on earth could he possibly have come close to losing his tour card? The blue puts him 70 ahead with 67 on. 60. So, Chiron, we'll carry on, but one snook I needed, and obviously the red's not in very favourable positions, all of them tied up. So, if he's going to win this frame, it's going to be a long slog, but um, he always knows there's a chance. He played a very bad shot there, though to have left maybe not I thought he'd left an edge of that red so he could just chip it in the middle but a little bit careless that one and that's opened a couple of up for Margot so he can get a, a few reds and blacks and he would love to get into a position where he can get these two open reds with blacks and the red on the black cushion and at some stage try and have just one red left on the right there and because it's next to the pink, be able to stun him behind the pink off the last red. See a long way to go before that. But again, as I was saying before, it's it's a situation where you are thinking quite a number of shots ahead because you're trying to get yourself into a position of where's best to lay the snooker from. And you'll already know that. No. You'll be trying to get rid of these reds and get himself into a position where the pink's a great ball to get behind. When it comes to 60. successfully getting snookers, Marco Fu was involved in one of the most remarkable frames I think I've ever commentated on. It was against 70. Ryan Day, as he has a good kiss there on the black. It was against Ryan Day in the semi-final of the World Grand Prix at Preston Guildhall. Ryan Day won the frame after needing four snookers against Marco. Four. Yeah, and that's not a bad little 24. cannon. As I say, if you can get rid of this extra red. You see, there, there's what I was talking about before. Hit the near knuckle there, and you wouldn't have expected that to go in necessarily. But they are playing a little bit more generous than what a lot of the players have, have expected. But like I was saying, that, that red near the pink there now, this is the situation you would have been wanting to get in right from the start. Land him behind this red with a good angle so he can just stun him behind the pink. Oh, 
What's he done here, though? Don't tell us he's left the cue ball, so the black spots. No. 32. The way, the, the way he's left himself, he'll probably just roll in behind the pink now. And that's Mark trouble. for 32. So, yeah, he would have seen that from shot one. Luckily, got himself into the right position, and it just shows how quickly it can turn around, because if he misses this... Marco's in with a great chance to steal the frame. Foul. He has, and Marco he's brought the four. green off the side. He's put it on the ball cushion, which is his only saving grace on that shot, really. He's put the, the green safe for Marco, so it's not as easy a, a clearance. Yes, and of course... What? The referee wasn't empowered to call the miss there because the snooker was required. Ooh, perfectly on the black ball. Yeah, and just just for getting out of that snooker, Tepchaya, the way the way he should have been thinking there. If Eight. I'm sure he was. He's just misjudged it badly. But it was to try and miss that, not try and miss it. But if he was to miss it, try and leave the cue ball in a position where Marco wouldn't have had an easy shot at the red. Because he's misjudged it so badly, he's hit the green, he's left Marco a good chance. But this is the key shot, whether Marco decides to take it on, thinking that maybe the pockets are playing a little bit generous. I'm not too sure. They're always not as easy along the, the ball cushion as they are the black cushion, with the nap running the other way. Not that there's much nap on these tables these days. But again, that, was, that just seemed, seemed relatively easy. It was a great shot. You're looking just to run the cue ball through here now and personally I would just run it through a little bit so he's just got a plain ball angle on the blue just to send the cue ball off the cushion 17. and knock the pink out. May not quite have come far enough for the shot he's played. Might have to leave the double now. No Twice. one's infallible with this shot but I'll tell you what over the course of his career who has been a pretty dependable doubler. Yeah, he's actually come too far there, though. The angle's not quite there for the double anymore, so it looks like he's going to have to take his medicine, play good safety, try and get the cue ball in behind the black, the pink up on the ball cushion. Marco he's actually just concentrated on 20s. putting the pink as safe as he can and not really thought too much of the white. It's a very good shot for where the pink's landed. Yeah, getting out of position on the double actually might have done him a favour there. Took the, the decision out of his head. Yeah, it's a funny game. A bad shot can turn into a good shot sometimes. Tepchai are only needing the pink. He might be tempted to have a go at this double. No, he's played safe and he's played a very good safety shot there as well, getting the white in behind the black. And with that, the pendulum has swung again. Fu, 12 points adrift. So he can't afford to miss the pink if he does. He will need a snooker. Yeah, he just needs to probably come off one cushion here, just below the middle pocket. He needs to hit the pink, as you say, and play it with a little bit of pace. He needs to try and get some separation and not leave the pink on, which is, you just trust him to look, basically. Foul. Tips out on new six. considering he made a 60 break earlier in the frame and he was in seemingly total control and new will be relieved although he knows the job isn't quite over yet yeah touch surprised he's played that as hard as he did thought he would have just played it dead weight to leave the pink over the pocket if he missed it and little things kind of like, like that can 
can make a difference sometimes if Marco gets himself a chance to get a snooker. Again, just a little harder than I thought. The way the angle presented itself there, he could have played that softer, and even if he'd have missed the pink on the way down, Kibo was always going to contact the pink on the way back off the cushion. It's just given Marco these extra little chances to possibly get a snooker. He really, again, possibly chipped the pink along the cushion here, knowing that he can't miss it on the way back. That's risky, going round him. Where's the cue ball? That would have been the cardinal sin. Taking the white anywhere near a pocket in this situation is a total no-no. Thanks, Marco. This is what I mean. Given Marco chances, can't really afford to do. It's always edge of the seat stuff, Phil, isn't it, when you're watching Tep Chaya? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. He's so unpredictable, so inconsistent. The highs are so high. The lows can be quite low. But I think Frank, he's OK it. now. Frank, Tep Chaya on you. Well, it took a while. Marco Fu refused to capitulate. In the end, though, when he left the pink, he knew that was that. The worst that can happen to Tep Chaya and Nu now is to draw his opening match in this Bed Victor Championship League. And the reason for that is because he leads Marco Fu 2-1. Tep Chaya Anu looking to affix the final piece into a, a jigsaw that would give him a 3-1 win over fourth, Marco right. Fu. Good stuff so Marco far. To break. Typical Tep Chaya Anu snooker. At times, outstanding. At others, head-scratching. Can tell you over on table two, the second match of the day has one frame on the board. It belongs to Matthew Stevens who has taken the opener against Mitchell Mann on the black. Yeah, again, as you see with the break-off there, very hard to get anywhere near over behind the green, um, even if it isn't quite as thick as he did, and a red came up and actually left a chance into the middle pocket, but miss it somewhat by Tep Chaya, so a bit of a half-chance missed there. Oh, and he's been a little fortunate just to get in behind the yellow there, Marco. Because he's blocked off the left side, he can't just run into the left side of the pack there and leave nothing. If he runs into the right-hand side, he's obviously going to be leaving a red on, so... Just in a little bit of luck here. He's played that well. He's tried for a full ball contact there to play a containing shot, and it's very well judged, swerving the white round the yellow. I must ask you this, Gary. We sometimes talk about players dictating the pace of a match. Now, generally speaking, that's when a slower player slows down the proceedings and tries to contain a faster player. But I suppose if you're up against someone like Tep Chaya, it's possible for him to increase <coughs> your pace. Yeah, it, it can do. It can, it can work that way as well, where you're playing somebody like Tep Chaya and you find yourself sort of playing to his rhythm. You, you may be just playing safety shots back and forth and you, you, you're sort of playing your next safety shot straight down, playing it first shot you see, which is 
really the way you should be playing in essence it's, it's instinctive and the first shot you see is generally the correct one but he can make you sort of play to his pace um, and when you realise that sometimes in a game you do just try and sort of slow it down a little bit and think take more time over what you're doing in case you're slipping up or making any mistakes it's not something we do these days sort of try slow play, slow, slow players down but yeah as you say it can have an adverse effect the other way around Bood taking his time here, recognising the fact that one good positional shot and he could be bang in. One. That's acceptable. One of your kisses, that, Phil. Had to let the cue ball run a little bit there, though. It was a little bit thin on the black, so still needs a good positional shot Eight. if he's going to get back in a perfect position. He'll be looking to either run this in. I don't think he's quite got the angle just to run it in and avoid the red on the cushion, so stun it round the two reds of the right-hand side and back up for blue, potentially. Just caught the red Nine. on the way through, though. Not sure if the black... Still pots. Well, if it does, it's the the definition of a pressure shot. Ticklish. He's played that lovely. He didn't even try and drop it in and trust the table in any way. He just trusted his technique, his cueing. Very good shot off the cushion, that. 60. 70. Now back in prime position, so looking like a decent opportunity this for Marco. We did say that good chance this could be a two-all draw. If he makes the most of this, then That'll be the case. And just to put into perspective how important it is for Fu to win this frame, 20. if he's going to retain any table-topping ambitions, this is day 10 of the tournament, so we've had 18 completed groups now. No one has lost their first match and won a group. 22, thank you. Yeah, which is obviously shows why it's so important to get off to a good start. A draw is not the end of the world, but it goes without saying. You want to get a, a win in your first match. It just sets you up for the group. Kind of makes you think it's all in your own hands. Rob for being ultra careful there, the referee, and putting the black on the spot, knowing that it could be quite tight to this red. A good referee in that, just to make sure the black's perfect on the spot. Thirty. Just try to come on the pink, so he's a little bit high. I think he might not have come quite far enough for what he wanted there, which was to push through the reds and open them up a little bit around the pink spot but it's not too bad he's still got the red on the right hand side he can play on 36. pink doesn't spot so it goes up into the highest available the green spot 36 Well, I must say, regardless of the outcome, it's really good to see Marco Fu back. Thirty-seven. He's made over 500 centuries in professional competition, which is up there with the elite. Turned pro 24 years ago. Yeah, he's a very heavy scorer, Marco. 
if you're not as much in the know with snooker or the players, you might not think so, but all us players and commentary... 44. Commentary personnel like yourself and Dave, we all know how how heavy a scorer he is, how good a player he is. Not the flashiest of players, of course, but very, very dangerous when he's in and around the black spot. Holds the distinction of being the first player ever to make a 147 break in a match that was streamed online. It was at the, the old Regal Masters in Scotland. His prize was a car, and at the time he didn't drive. Who did he give it to, Phil? Just got the impression he might have sold it, actually. <laughs> you think? We don't get cars now, Phil, do we? Well, of course, I remember when there was a car on offer for a 147 in the Grand Prix in the, the tournament in your part of the world, up in Sunderland. And it was parked outside of the venue and got vandalised. Yeah, that's Sunderland for you. <laughs> Had to get that in. 60. Well, this break might have been wrecked by that. Yeah, just ran out of position a bit carelessly, really. He was, in a, he was in a good position there to kill off the frame. So, although he's got a chance of a draw here, Marco, he'll be a bit disappointed at the way he's started his campaign. It's not been abysmal by any stretch, of course, but when you get chances like that, a player of Marco's class would be really expecting to make the most of them. So, he'll just be working his way into the tournament anyway. He'll not be getting too disappointed about it. He'll hope he can nick a draw here and and just up his performance a little bit for the, the next couple of games. Seven reds left, so still 83 on the table. And this is where Marco's experience can come into it. You don't get flustered by, you know, not performing too well to start of the season. It's all about getting through at the end of the day and building on that. Nicely queued again, just overcooked the cue ball. Who needs the black and one more red? Eight. Mark off for eight. Off rain ball missed. The good stuff for Fu. Those reds cluster together even more. And no easy opener. Well, no opener. Yeah, if you do miss like that, it's always nice to see you sort of mess the table up a little bit and not leave your opponent a chance. The way they're positioned, it's going to be very hard for Tepchaya to win the frame. To you who's liking this backstage, Jimmy Robertson. This result falls right into his lap. Yeah, Jimmy being the seed, obviously, as you say, played first. You, you get a chance at the end of the day to see what the situation is going into your last game. And because he's won his game, he'd have been hoping for nothing more than these two top players to obviously draw. It means that it puts Jimmy in a much better position straight away. That could be that. Left the red on for Marco. Little cutback, but not too tricky, really. Should pop this. Well. And if this red goes in, there is definitely no way back. Three. 
Yeah, I think I think Tepchaya will be a touch disappointed the way he started the game flying. Um, I wouldn't say it looked like he was going to run away with it, of course, but it looked like he was in stroke and he was playing quite well, so he'll be a bit disappointed Four. to only come out of this twos each. Cheers. On the other hand, Marco won't be too impressed with the way he's played himself, but again, just getting back into the flow of things this season, um, starting with a two-all draw, he'll just try and build on that, so not too bad from his perspective. Good luck. Yeah, after an enforced break from the professional Marco tour, I think this is a really good return from Marco Fu. Honours are even. Tepchaya 